Hello lovely people, welcome back and thanks for your support. Keep watching free stuff, please like, share and subscribe. Today we are going to talk about four things that's going to make your difficult conversation easy. You'd ask, what is a difficult conversation? So if you're a people manager having direct reports, there are times when you have to speak to your uh, team members, your direct reports and tell them what's not right and help them understand how to improve and tell them certain areas that is just not right. So that's a difficult conversation that you're going to have with your direct reports and why it's difficult because you are going to have a di discussion with your direct report with the point of view that they are doing something wrong and when they are going to come inside the room, they will have a point of view that they are doing everything right. So it has two different theories, two different people going to talk in one room. It's going to be difficult. That's the reason I call it a difficult conversation. And I've got four items that you need to prepare with before you get inside the room. And I guarantee it's going to be an easy as cakewalk. So what are those four items that you need to make sure that you have looked after? Well, coming from my own experience, I make sure that every time I go for these kind of conversations, I look at these four items. So what's these four items? Number one starts with my motive. What is my motive for this meeting? And a very simple question that I need to ask myself is, what do I want? And when I get an answer to what do I want, then I need to ask a couple of more questions with different flavors, such as what do I want for my team? What do I want for my customer? What do I want for my stakeholders? So if I get answers to all these four questions, then I'm at peace and I know what am I supposed to get out of that individual from this meeting. So that's very important to clear my motives. The second item that I make sure of is to remove all emotions out of this meeting. There are times that you would be getting feedbacks from different channels. A lot of people would come in and tell you uh, things about that individual. You might notice few things. You might uh, people would come in and complain to you. So what happens when you get to hear such kind of uh, things you immediately get upset or you're angry or you're irritated or you just despise that em employee well <clears throat> those things are not constructive you're not gonna find an answer you're not gonna be it, it's not gonna be a positive conversation if you carry those emotions along with you inside the room so you got to remove all such emotion out of your brain go in with an emotion which is gonna be positive but assertive right so yeah, I don't want you to uh, think that I'm saying that you need to be happy-go-lucky kind of in a mood and go inside the room. No, you don't have to. Uh, and you should not because you, you are going to convey a message. You need to be serious about it. And everything that you say needs to resound your emotion that you're very serious about what you're talking. And you need to be assertive about it. I've seen people uh, conveying difficult messages with anger. I've been part of such discussions where someone above me had a discussion with their employees and instead of being constructive, instead of being factual, they were just angry, they were just pissed off. And the employees at that point just closed. They don't open up to your conversation. They will not tell you their side of story and then there is no, no conclusion after that. It's just that one way blah 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 you get angry and you speak out loud and the employee just listen to you and say okay fine and then moves out and then they're going to just go ahead and do the same thing again so in order to have a constructive and, and a good discussion uh, this conversation needs to be in an environment which is anger free nobody should be angry well you never know you cannot control the employee's emotion but you can control your emotion so you should not or never get angry should not have a judgmental image or you should not be judging the employee but even before you get inside the room all right the fourth, third item is facts <clears throat> why facts because these are the facts 
that has led you to this decision of having a conversation with the employee right so unless you have the facts that are accurate you wouldn't be going inside the room so you need to get the facts more the merrier and in what I've seen in in my own experience is that when I have to go in and have such a conversation I would want to have the facts collected at least <clears throat> certain percentage of the facts by myself I follow maybe I have a lot of time so I follow like 40 60 60 percent of the feedback I get from my um, mentors my leads and then 40 percent of the feedback or the facts that I collected myself so once I get the, those feedbacks I go in and start hunting for those facts uh, with my uh, discussions and issue reviews and uh, follow-ups and general walk through the floor uh, I kind of get a gist of things happening around so and then I can relate to the feedback that I have been receiving and then it helps me uh, formulate a plan of discussion so it's very important to get the facts right so facts however you collect get the facts right and <coughs> for me the other important aspect apart from the second aspect where I had to remove my where I, I suggest you to remove your emotion the other super important factor is getting curious uh, so don't be rigid like a wall right you've got your facts right so this is the decision that I have made and you have to follow well no you shouldn't be in that zone uh, my humble request is uh, we all need to be curious we all need to be open we all need to be ready flexible ready to make changes as the flow of discussion goes right so you tell your side of story and then let the employee tell their side of story and be receptive you should not have a rigid image about the employee and rigid decisions that you've already made up uh, before getting inside the room uh, and then you just convey that I kind of disagree to that mode of operandi so I would I follow a path where I have certain things that I would want to achieve out of this meeting but then I go inside the meeting room uh, with the agenda to understand the employees uh, point of view as well and uh, when we discuss I want to give my hundred percent attention to the employee and why I do that I'll clearly explain it by uh, what happens when you are in this room why is it so difficult because of two two people having different opposing ideas right and you both want to kind of impose your idea your suggestion on the other person similarly the employee wants to do the same thing on you and what happens if you start listening to the employee instead of opposing them the conflict is just gone there's no conflict after that the employee would be like well I want to oppose him now there is no res resistance from the manager so how do I oppose him I and mean, that's the kind of situation you'll be in so give your ears 100% to your employee let them speak up give let them tell you their side of stories maybe you've got all the facts right maybe you've got everything right but you may be missing one tiny item uh, which is causing all this uh, differences of opinion right so once you get to hear the employee and you understand them uh, their point of views and you get the, get kind of few things that are avoiding them to achieve the goal that you want them all you have to do is go in and remove those restrictions remove those roadblocks once that's removed the employee would be a superstar I've happened it has happened with me in my team uh, where we had a discussion with an employee and then uh, we were talking and then suddenly the employee comes in uh, employee opens up and tells that there are certain areas that are not letting her achieve what she wants to do so all we did was discussed and how to remove those roadblocks and then now she's a, one of the greatest performers in my team so that's what you achieve if you are going to be open and curious in such meetings right so just to sum up all we need to do is make sure that we know what our motives are what do we want 
have no emotions attached to it, no matter who. It, it might be your closest friend, it might be someone you're looking to promote to next level and then you have, have to have a meeting. So don't have that emotion where hmm, should, I should not affect his performance or I should not be whatever. I mean, you get it, right? Don't have any emotion in this meeting. Number third uh, was getting your facts checked and collected. The more the merrier and uh, some of the facts you need to check it yourself and you have to have the facts. And the fourth one was to be curious and be open and be receptive to what your employees are telling you. So I guarantee if you are going to make sure these four items are covered before you're going to go inside the meeting room, your meetings will not be difficult. They'll be easy peasy. And most of the time you will have a positive result out of that meeting. So watch out for these four items and make sure to subscribe my channel because I come out every week with such videos. See you now next week. Bye-bye.